Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the 200th episode of Classic Gamer 74. I'm your host, Anthony Gamer, and I want to thank you guys for make, helping me to make it to this episode. It's been a lot of fun working on this channel. I met some really cool people. I want to thank you guys for uh, just everything. It's been a great ride, and we're just getting started. we got a long way to go, so we're going to keep going with this. So, uh, first thing we're going to do is talk about my co-hosts. Um, I've had several over the years, um, but there's been a few mainstays, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about each one of them. So, when I do that, I'm going to show you clips from uh, the first time that they've joined me, uh, and their personal favorite episode and mine as well. So, without further ado, let's get started. Of course, I had to start off with this guy, didn't I? Oh yeah, hi everyone, it's me, your old pal, Larry, Larry the Lion. Okay, so, the first time that you met Larry the Lion was on uh, the episode Anthony, uh, where I was uh, trying to find a co-host. I'll show clips from that. We also have our own series called Anthony and Larry Play, where we compete against each other, playing some of our favorite video games. Yep, uh, who's won most of those? I don't really know, that's a good question. Uh, if any of you know, uh, let me know in the comments section below which of us has actually won the most games. That'd be kind of interesting to see. Yep, sure would. Okay, also, uh, a little bit about him. Uh, his name is taken from the character uh, of Larry Laffer from the Leisure Suit Larry games, as I was a big fan of those games growing up. Yep. And that's why he introduces himself uh, as such. Hi, everyone. It's me, Larry. Larry the Lion. Ugh. <laughs> whatever <laughs> anyway as again that's a play on leisure suit Larry um, he is happily married to Lillian yep and they got a lot of kids yep you could say that and uh, for some reason they don't want to move out <laughs> okay and again uh, his fa first appearance was on the auditions where I was looking for uh, new co-hosts remember that oh yeah uh, we'll look at some clips of that and, of course, our favorite episode together was us doing Desert Bus. Oh, yeah. So, let's look at some clips from uh, his very first appearance and from us doing Desert Bus. Okay, hello there. Um, what's your name? My name is Larry, Larry the Lion. Oh, hi, Larry. I'm Anthony. Nice to meet you. So, um, tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm a lion. Uh, I used to work for Harris Bank. Uh, I had a variety of jobs. I worked for the circus for a while. Uh, there's all kinds of good stuff. Uh, where are you originally from? Africa, the jungle. Okay. Um, have you ever worked for YouTube before? Done a YouTube video before? Mm, nope, that's about the only thing I haven't done. Oh, okay. How about video games? Yeah, I love them. Especially the ones where you get to chase down gazelles and eat them. Uh, I've never heard of a video game that does that. Really? Want to make one? Uh, maybe someday. I'm trying to learn how to do binary code, so maybe we can make a, you know, we can make a video game together someday. Oh, that'd be great. Trailers for sale or rent. Rooms to let fifty cents. No phone, no pool, no pets. I got no cigarettes, ah, but two hours of pushing broom buys an eight by twelve four bit room. I'm a man of knees by no means, king of the road. And next up, we got my pal Al Gonquin. Eugene Gator. Oh, you had to say the whole thing, didn't you? See, that's why I go by Al E. Gator, as opposed to my full name. <laughs> that's right. Uh, he is a Louisiana Gator. Yep, I still am. Originally, the character was inspired by uh, the Louisiana Gator from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I based his voice on that. Also mixed with the Louisiana Chef. I'm, many of you are probably familiar with that. But in re in later on, I um, changed his voice a little bit more to reflect uh, that of one of my favorite wrestlers that had passed away, that being the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. Oh yes, I am Americana. 
a be a son of a plumber and all that good stuff, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, he also is married with a lot of kids to his wife, Allison. Yep, love of my life first and always will be my woman. Yep, exactly. His favorite game of all time uh, is Asteroids. Oh, yeah. Um, the His personal favorite episode that we did together was Pitfall 2, The Lost Caverns. We did a playthrough of that. And his first appearance was in the Asteroids episode way back in the day. So, here's some clips from the Asteroids episode, along with uh, a little bit from us doing the playthrough of Pitfall 2 The Lost Caverns. Hey everyone, and welcome to Classic Gamer 74, episode 26, Asteroids, continuing on with the best of the Atari 2600 series. I'm your host, Anthony Ventrillo, and I'm Alligator. Welcome back, everybody. All right, and next up, I have my friend, Red the Fox. Oh, yeah, it's nice to see everyone today. It's me, your old pal, Red the Fox. And uh, Red Fox, of course, is the name, at least, is based on that famous junk man. Oh, yeah, but I'll tell you what, I have nothing in common with that guy there, don't you know? Yep. Uh, he is actually, um, the voice and everything is a uh, stereotypical Canadian, or as how a lot of Americans uh, think. Canadians talk or perceive. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. To be honest with you, uh, I don't know what I was going to say. Yeah, I've always been talking like this. Okay, he loves curling, uh, especially Jennifer Jones. Oh, yeah, Jennifer Jones. Uh, but I'm not too happy about the fact that uh, she's got a whole new team now. Yeah, because, you know, I'm a big Caitlin Laws fan, and of course, I have to side with Caitlin Laws. Oh, yeah, but I have to side with Jennifer Jones. Speaking of which, we used to have our own uh, podcast called Curling Talk for a little while. Um, that didn't last too long, but we had fun doing it. Oh, yeah, we sure did. Um, okay, we also have our own little side gig called Anthony and Red's Top Ten. Haven't done that in a little while, but we're going to make some new ones. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, now, where was, where did you tell me when we first met where you were originally from? Oh yeah, I was from a town called, uh, No Hunting, Oregon. And at least that's what I thought, because that's what the sign said there at the edge of the woods. Right. So, anyway, he likes handheld games. Oh yeah, I love the handheld games. I had my own episode there a while back where I, uh, talked about, uh, handheld games. I uh, didn't get a lot of views, but you know what? I don't care. <laughs> okay. Uh, the very first episode I uh, ever had with him was uh, pretty much introducing him. Oh, yeah, the introduction episode. And our favorite episode we did together was the Paperboy. So let's take a gander at some of the... Oh, God, now I'm talking like you. <laughs> yeah, you sure are. Let's take a look at uh, some clips from when we first met Red and uh, some look at that uh, Paperboy episode. All right, let's get started. So your name is Red. Yup. And what's your last name? Fox. I should have known. I, I should have known. Let me guess. You expected me to say stuff like, you big dummy. And speaking of big... <clears throat> okay, I get it. <clears throat> oh, what you gonna do about that paper boy out there? Well, I already called and canceled the subscription. Okay. And, uh... The newspaper said they're going to reprimand him, but he kind of has a history of doing this. Oh, yeah, of course he does. And the best part of all, what's that? He's going to be riding past here tomorrow, so we're going to get him when he comes by. You ready? Oh, yeah. Wait till tomorrow. <laughs> 24 hours later. All right, you ready? Ready when you are. Hey, there he is. Quick, go get him. Hey, come here, you punk. Come here. Ow! Get him! Ow! Ow! Bite him! Ooh! I got his foot, Anthony! I'm gonna bite him right now! Ow! That's mine! Ow! Come here, little punk! Ooh. I hope y'all enjoyed uh, today's episode of Classic Gamer 74. If you did... And here we are back again, and this is my friend Humphrey. Hello! Now, Humphrey was inspired, the, the least the voice, was inspired by the British actor Richard O'Brien. Many of you probably know that he was uh, the writer and one of the stars in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh, yes. Then that's about all we have in common is the voice. <laughs> uh, actually, he's named after 
one of my favorite detectives, or my actual favorite detective, on the show Death in Paradise. Uh, that's where I get the name from. Now, he prefers uh, the ZX Spectrum. Yes, at least you finally learned how to say it right. <laughs> In American English, it's called the ZX Spectrum. But um, And he actually likes the CD32. Are you serious? Yes, I am. I put that down on the paper so that I do expect us to do an episode about it. I don't care what the angry video game nerd says. It was a very underrated and an extraordinarily great game system that was way ahead of its time. Yeah. Okay then. <laughs> uh, he dislikes uh, rare and valuable games that suck. Oh yes, I made that very clear. Nothing worse than a game that isn't any good. I don't care how much it's worth. <laughs> okay. Uh, he is married to Virginia Woolf. Yes, I am. No children, but I am very happily married to Virginia. Um, now, his very first appearance was on Rare and Valuable 2600 Games, uh, episode 13. Again, one of my, one of your favorites, but we'll get into that. And his favorite episode was, um, his personal episode. Oh, that's correct. I got a chance to have my own episode when you were on vacation, and I really enjoyed it. I don't think a lot of other people did, but I enjoyed it myself. <laughs> anyway, all right, so let's take a quick look at his first appearance on episode 13, and then look at his uh, personal episode, which was episode 188. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Classic Gamer 74, episode 13, Rare and Valuable Atari Games, part one. I am your host, Anthony Ventrillo, and filling in this week is my friend Humphrey. Hello. Unfortunately, Larry the Lion got in trouble, and he's on punishment with his wife, so Humphrey's going to fill in for the next couple episodes. Jolly good. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Classic Gamer 74. For those of you that don't know, Anthony is on vacation, so this week is my turn to present the episode. And for those of you that don't know, I am Humphrey the Wolf. And, as you can tell by the accent, I'm not from around these parts. <laughs> anyway, since I have the choice of what to do my episode about, I am going to do mine on the computer that I was raised with, and that is the ZX Spectrum. Okay, everyone, we're back. I'm right here. You can see me. And now we're going to talk about this guy. Hello, everyone. It's me, Smitty, the Chinese-American dragon. Yeah. Now, of course, he is named after Edward Smith, who is uh, the creator of the Imagination Machine, one of the first hybrid computer-slash-gaming consoles. Uh, of course, I've had the privilege of talking with him myself. Yeah, but then, of course, you had to... I am based on him, even though I am a Chinese-American dragon. Okay. Now, his parents are from China. Uh, he loves anything Sega. Oh, yes. Hate Nintendo. Love Sega. Uh, now, when I first... His first appearance, uh, he had a different voice. I changed the voice uh, to reflect that of Dirty Dragon from Giggle Snort Hotel uh, in tribute to Bill Jackson, or BJ as they called him on the show, because he uh, passed away earlier uh, this year. Yep, that was a tragedy. Uh, big fan of the show. Uh, love the show. And his first appearance was in the motorcycle racing games, uh, when you heard his original voice. And his favorite episode, no surprise here, was his solo episode. Yeah, that's right. I talked about Lost Media and Sega, Lost Sega games, and I got the highest ratings of all, sing of all solo episodes. So, haha. -ha. Yeah. So, let's have a quick look at his first appearance uh, and his favorite episode, that being his. Yep, sure is. Just thinking about it makes me... Uh-oh, no, stand back. Uh, bless me. While, while Anthony cleans up the soot and uh, sets... Uh, uh, roll around, Anthony, roll around. It'll... It, it, it just roll around on the floor. Um, I'll tell you. Hello, everyone. This is Smitty, the Chinese American Dragon. Now, don't be alarmed. There's nothing wrong with your television. 
or computer screen or phone or whatever it is you're watching this video on. We, the puppets, have been left in charge as Anthony is on vacation. So, we were given instructions on what type of videos we were to do, but you know what? We're going to do whatever the heck we want to. So, Okay, I'm back again, and we got Mumford. Yeah, we sure do. Uh, where am I? <laughs> okay. Anyway, so uh, Mumford is known for being older than dirt. Yeah, I sure am. Hey, wait a minute. That isn't funny. <laughs> What'd you say again? Um, now, he is based on several former co-workers uh, that I worked with that uh, kept going long after uh, retirement age. Uh, that's pretty much who he's based on. Yep. Uh, that wasn't nice either. Well, no, but, you know, you did work a little too long. Yeah, I used to be a teacher. Uh, we know that. Uh, you did, yeah. And, uh, well, they had to let me go because I kept wanting to have nap time. Well, was, what were you teaching? High school? Oh, that could be dangerous. <laughs> yeah, you would know. <laughs> anyway. Okay, he loves the Magnavox Odyssey. Yep, the first one. And he loves Pong. Oh, yeah. Now, I was supposed to have my own episode where we were going to talk about that stuff, but I never got to. Damn it. Um, yeah, we will have an episode uh, where we, he and I will play the original Magnavox Odyssey games and some Pong games together. Oh, boy. Um, so, what else? Okay. Uh, a lot of his memory of his earlier days is a blur. Yep, it sure is. And uh, his the first episode... Uh, well, he was a call-in guest sometimes. He would call in and complain about the games and other things like that. Yep, don't like the violent games. No, you don't. <laughs> but his favorite episode uh, was the one where we did Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh, that was your favorite, not mine. I still have nightmares about it. So anyway, let's check out some great moments uh, with Mumford and some clips from the Five Nights at Freddy episodes. Episode, right. No, no, we're not doing that again. No, no, we're not going to do another episode on Five Nights at Freddy's, but let's look at the one that you were in. Okay. The game itself has received positive review from critics and fans alike. The game itself was so successful that it led to a bunch of sequels. I think about six of them, uh, five books. Uh, you can find the characters from Five Nights at Freddy's on just about everything from hats see, to lunch boxes t-shirts, and even toys. What are you doing? Uh, have you looked down? Oh, yeah, these are some of the toys right here and the characters from the stories. Um, did you put them there? No, you didn't. Stop trying to be funny. Uh, okay. All right, next we have my friend Lawson. Hello, everyone. I'm Lawson the thylacine. A thylacine is an extinct, or I should say presumed to be extinct species. Otherwise, how else would I be here? That's correct. Now, um, a thylacines, again, are a species of animals that uh, marsupials from the Australia, um, Tasmanian region that are thought to be extinct, but, you know, we can get into that later. Uh, I plan on doing... Uh, a documentary about thylacines, which is why I got him in the first place, because I was planning on doing uh, some side project about thylacines, so I just decided to keep him on. Yep, he sure did. Now, of course, he's named after uh, Jerry, Gerald Lawson, the father of the video game cartridge, thus where he gets the name Lawson from. He prefers uh, Super Nintendo. Yeah, he really dislikes Sega Genesis. Oh, y'all, it's a terrible, con it's a terrible, terrible uh, console. I don't care what that dragon friend of yours says. I don't like it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, the very first uh, time we saw him was on the boxing episode. That was episode 153. Uh, and his favorite episode is where we discussed uh, the game Sam and Max. So, let's take a, a gander at the uh, first time we saw him in the boxing episode and on the episode about Sam and Max. Hi everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Classic Gamer 74. I am your host, Anthony Gamer, and this is the latest addition to the Classic Gamer 74 family. I'll let him introduce you. Hello there, my name is Gerald Thylazine Lawson. Just call me Lawson then. All right. Thank you for joining us, Lawson. 
Many of you may not be familiar with Sam and Max. They were a media franchise or are a media franchise that came out in the late 80s. That's correct. They started off as a comic strip created by Steve Purcell. And the comic strip itself ran for quite a while. Uh, they didn't become worldwide famous until 1983 when the game Sam and Max Hit the Road was created by LucasArts. That's correct. And after that, they became a pretty big worldwide phenomenon. In spite of the fact that there is very little media technically out there about them other than the games. And look who's back. Yep, I'm back. Me, Larry, Larry the Lion. All right. Now let's talk about some of the side projects uh, that you started that... Uh, didn't last. Right. Now, every channel tries to experiment in order to reach uh, a wider audience, and Classic Gamer 74 is no exception. Uh, I tried a couple other side things for, you know, based on my own personal interests. Uh, one was Musical Memories. Uh, in these episodes, I discussed some of my all-time favorite classic rock albums. I'd planned on doing uh, getting into met heavy metal, some country, modern music, just anything, any f full albums that I enjoyed. And I quit doing it because of the fact it was just too exhausting to do two channel, you know, do two episodes like that uh, every week. Uh, as those of you that watched the musical memories, there was a lot of information and it took a lot of work to uh, do those. I may bring those back. Now, I made a dumb mistake. Uh, and that was I deleted them off the channel, even though some of them had lots and lots of views, and then I brought them back. Now, I learned from L Super Sonic Q, an amazing YouTuber that I, am, that I watch every week, uh, that what I should have done is just made them privatize, you know, put them private, and then later on, you know, bring them back if I felt like it. You know, don't delete stuff off your channel. That's definitely one thing I learned. Uh, classic Board Gamer, it's a thing that Larry and I did during... Uh, the pandemic um, as like a side thing to show people hey you know dig out those old board games while you're all in the house and have some fun same kind of thing it didn't really work out the the viewings weren't that great and yeah uh, there's some lost media though I'll talk about later uh, uh, related to that and another side project I didn't end up doing either the solo episodes was another experiment I tried to see how you, the viewers, would enjoy seeing them do their own episodes you know, without me. Uh, didn't go as well, uh, really didn't go as well as I thought it would. I got some real negative feedback. Uh, a couple of them did pretty well, but overall, no, the the viewings were, yeah, really low. Oh, wow. Live and learn. Yep. So, uh, also that was a, from a suggestion um, from somebody as well. So, Another thing that I was able to do during this channel was to continue my writing. Now, any of you that have known me for any length of time know that I am a pub published writer. And I have released two books during the time that I have been working on this channel. The first one is called History of Gaming, according to a middle-aged guy who likes old video games and plays with puppets. Uh, these were based on the stories in here, or the art were actually articles that I had written while I was sponsored for a gaming club at the last school I worked at last school year. I would write an article every week uh, based on some aspect of gaming uh, and I put it on a Google Classroom so that the members of the gaming club could read them and at the end of the year we had a really big Jeopardy Labs where we had a contest and the winner got a fully stocked Atari 2600. It, it was a lot of fun. Well at the end of the school year I went through when I was got when I was leaving and I was gonna, and I was cleaning out cleaning out the Google Classroom, I guess you could say, and I realized that I had a lot of articles, so I decided to take all those articles and put them in this book, and yeah, there were quite a few of them. The book in itself ended up being like almost 330 pages, so there's all kinds of cool articles on here. If you'd like to purchase this book, you can get it on Amazon, in print book, you know, paperback and ebook format. So. Uh, check it out. Many of you already have, and I've really enjoyed the feedback. Thank you. Now, my latest book that just came out this week is A Guide to Edutainment Gaming, uh, The Early Console Years. Now, this book is about edutainment gaming, which is something I really believe in a lot. Um, now, in this one, I will I discuss different edutainment games from different game systems. 
uh, and I have a screenshot from the game. I discuss the, what the game is about, the educational focus, uh, the game system it's on. You know, a lot of work went into this, but again, it's some. I believe that edutainment gaming, gaming is the way to reach a lot of students. Um, as somebody who grew up playing uh, such great games like Math Magic Mansion um, and Oregon Trail, um, it's something I really do believe in. And this book, I think, is one that other educators like myself, uh, principals, even parents should check out to see. Uh, some of the great edutainment games that were made for the early consoles. And, uh, of course, that's the Magnavox Odyssey, the Atari 2600, the ColecoVision and Television, and Magnavox Odyssey 2. Now, this book is also available on Amazon in both print and ebook, but if you get the uh, print book and the ebook, have different bonus chapters. So, uh, there will be more games, more books, excuse me, in this series where I will discuss. Uh, edutainment games and computers, and then I'll move on to um, uh, the NES, Super NES, and uh, those systems, and look at the edutainment games for those systems as well. So again, both of these books are available on Amazon in both print book and ebook and ebook format, so uh, if you get a chance, check them out and let me know what you think. Uh, please leave feedback on Amazon. It really helps me uh, and helps get more people... Uh, to notice this, my books and purchase them. I also have 18 other books that I've written in various different genres, including poetry, nonfiction, fiction. Uh, I did a series on um, a fantasy series that I wrote with my daughter, uh, all kinds of stuff. So please check out uh, my books on Amazon and let me know what you think. It would be most appreciated. Okay, so let's look ahead. What is coming up for this channel? Well, we have, uh, we're going to do more sports series, uh, more sports games. We haven't done those in a while. Nope. Uh, more AVPs. We're going to have a new uh, unit. We're starting on life simulation games. Wow, that's going to be cool. we got more lost media coming. Uh, more content is going to be added to our Patreon. Now, if you haven't checked out our Patreon, please do. Uh, we've got some episodes on there, some music videos, some other stuff that's uh, not usually what we put out for this channel. Uh, some of them including my uh, friend, The Darkness. And uh, we're going to have our next... What is our next gaming unit going to be? Well, this is by special request from a longtime supporter of this channel. And our next uh, unit is going to be about... Did you catch that? No, it was too fast. I know, but if you caught it, you guys will probably be excited about it. All right, also, here's a clip from of our own Lost Media. Now, there is some Lost Media for this channel, and again, that's something I learned about later after uh, watching uh, El Supersonic Q, where he talked about how I should have just made them private, not deleted them, but then I ended up having some Lost Media. One is the original episode about the CCW games. Now, if you watch that, channel if you see the episode on here now it's called the it's called the re it's called the re-recorded version in which uh we actually redid it uh, the original episode i pulled because my wife said that she didn't like the finger puppets uh yeah and so i pulled that episode unfortunately i didn't back it up and it's now lost um, even though my wife hated it and it didn't get a lot of good views anyway, but regardless, um, that episode is lost. So, uh, if any of you did happen to record any of my episodes, like, early on, let me know about it in the comments section below, because I'd like to get that back. Yep, that would have, uh, that would have been a nice one to look again. Yeah, and, uh, how we, the way we talked in the video, how we justified the, the new episode was that his son, uh, Larry the Third. Uh, ate the finger puppets, which in real life he actually did. Yep, he sure did. Uh, that kid sure loves chewing on stuff. <laughs> anyway, so our, our final section then for today... Uh, wait, I forgot one more thing. What's that? I uh, forgot about the lost media. Oh yeah, the other lost media. Well, a side channel that we were going to work on was going to be about classic uh, toys. Unfortunately, we only filmed one episode, and it didn't work out, and that was mostly because we tried... Uh, using tried 
uh, this old train set, but it kept getting stuck. So here's a clip from that never before seen episode. Hi everyone, it's your old pal Anthony Gamer, and I'm Larry, Larry the Lion. And this is our first episode in our new series entitled Classic Board Games and Toys. And the first toy that we're going to be discussing today is one that I had as a young boy, and that is Tumbling Loco. All right then, here we go. Okay, gotta get it. How about that? Gotta get it going a little bit. Like I said, the parts are a little rusty inside. Come on. Once it gets going. Okay, and our last thing we like to talk about today before we go is your favorite episodes. So, out of the 200 episodes that we've made, uh, I've listed the top 10 here that you guys liked, your favorites. Uh, all right, so out of all those, now out of all the episodes all together, here were your top 10 favorites. And starting off at the number 10 spot, we have Atari 2600 Prototypes Part 1. That was episode 15. And at number 9, we have Rare and Valuable Atari 2600 Games Part 4. That was episode number 98. At the number 8 spot, we have a playthrough where we did Putt Putt Joins the Circus. And coming in at number 7, we have Rare and Valuable Atari 2600 Games Part 2, Episode 14. And at number 6, we have Peanuts Video Games, and that was Episode 17. And at number 5, we have Vintage Arcade Games. Uh, this was Episode 130. At the number 4 spot, we have Rare and Valuable Atari 2600 Games Part 3, Episode 73. At the number 3 spot, we have The Curly Shuffle. This is a music video that I made combining my favorite Stooges clips, uh, clips from my favorite Stooges video games, and of course, the great song, The Curly Shuffle by Jump in the Saddle Band. And at number two, we have Who Wants to Beat Up a Millionaire, the playthrough of the computer game that is a parody of Who Wants to Beat a Millionaire. And finally, at number one, the episode you all love the most, and that is the very first rare and valuable Atari 2600 games that was Lucky episode number 14. Which in effect was actually at well, that'll do it for this 200th episode of Class Gamer 74. I really hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a great big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to click that little bell icon down there so you'll be notified when I upload new episodes. So again, thank you so much for uh, these great four years we've had making this channel and uh, our 200th episode. It's been a lot of fun and we're going to keep going at it. So until next time, I'm Anthony Gamer and I'm Larry, Larry the Lion. On behalf of everyone at Classic Gamer 74, thank you so much. It's been a lot of fun doing this and thank you for the views. Thank you for the positive feedback and thank you to all the people behind the scenes that have helped out with this channel. I love you all very much. See you guys soon. Bye. Bye everyone.